Hi guys! For those who are new here, this is Surge On, and in here we're going to talk about everything surgical. So this vlog is another Marites file dahil hindi na ubusan na sakit ang mga idolo niyong celebrities. Malapit ang topic na ito sa puso ko dahil pareho kami ng sakit ng celebrity na ito. So this week, man boobs ang topic natin. Kaya let's get to meet our patient, TJ Marquez. Si TJ Marquez ay isang TV actor and commercial model na unang nakilala sa GM18 serye na Twin Hearts noong 2009. Naging bahagi siya ng maraming TV show sa GMA at kalaunan ay naging ABS-CBN talent. Lumabas si TJ sa maraming pelikula kabilang ng ilang BL series. Pero mas nakilala siya sa Indonesia nang imbitahan siya doon para gumanap na F4 member Shimen sa Indonesian version ng Meteor Garden. While taping in Indonesia 5 years ago, nagbakasyon si TJ sa Pilipinas at nagpakonsulta sa madalas na comments sa kanyang mga pictures sa social media, ang kanyang man boobs. So first, let's break it down. TJ is a diagnosed case of gynecomastia. It comes from two Greek words, gynec, which means woman or babae, at mastos, which means breast or suso. So ang literal meaning nito ay suso na kahawig ng sa babae. Meaning, lahat na nagkakagynecomastia ay lalaki, or trans, or they them na biologically male, or anyone maliban sa born genetically female. O diba? Dahil ang topic ng gender ay complicated na nowadays. Kaya ako naisip na i-vlog to kasi these past few months I feel that there's something wrong. Something is not right when it comes to my body. It makes me worried syempre. Kasi, sy kasi syempre katawan ko to. Simula yan few months ago kasi sometimes I post topless. Skin. May mga comments about my chest area. Parang, oh you have a nice chest. No, you have a big chest. Sobra naman, talo mo pa yung babae. I like that. So ang chief complaint ni TJ ay paglaki ng boobs or man boobs. So he got conscious because of body shaming. Akala ko noon I feel like, syempre pinagirapan ko yan eh. Kaso when I'm reading comments, people are really focusing on my chest. And not in a good way, but in a funny way. At saka yung iba parang nafe-feel ko na parang nagubuli ba ako or napagtatawa na na ba ako. Nag-workout naman ako. Baka ito lang yung reaction ng workout. Siyempre, nagpahinga rin ako before, kaya baka mamaya talagang lumabot lang, kaya medyo nagsagi. Naging concern na ako dun sa feeling na parang ano ba, meron bang mali sa chest ko? Ano ba yung pangit? Ano ba yung kapansin-pansin? Dun ko na talaga siya pinansin. So even if you'd work out, true gynecomastia will not go away. So may tinatawag tayong pseudo-gynecomastia or false man boobs. Yung man boobs na dahil sa katabaan or obesity ay nagiging malaki. Kaya we advise exercise first. At pag normal weight ng pasyente pero malaki pa rin ng boobs, true gynecomastia yon. Hindi ko alam kung ano nangyayari. And I'm scared kasi dumating sa point na baka mamaya I'm suffering from uh, breast cancer, chest cancer sa lalaki or breast cancer. Dahil sabi nila pati lalaki doon nagkakaroon. So doon ako kinabahan kasi Gyno in itself is benign. It does not lead to breast cancer. Okay, man boobs pala to, but bakit ako magkakaman boobs? I'm just, hindi naman ako galing sa malaking katawan na umayat. Ngayon ito lang naman ako kapayat. I was never big. Hindi ako lumaki ng sobra. Hindi ako tumaba ng sobra. Para kung umayat ako, magkaroon ako ng extra fat or extra skin or man boobs. True gyno ang kay TJ kasi hindi naman siya obese. Sa true gyno, ang gland mo mismo ang lumalaki. Not just the fat on breast area. So, hindi pa rin ako satisfied. Call the doctor and I send him my pictures. Here are the pictures. Yan. Yan yung mga pictures na sinend ko. At makikita nyo naman dito na medyo hindi pantay. Parang hindi siya normal na itsura. Lalo na hindi naman ako galing sa taba or hindi naman ako mataba para to have this kind of sagginess at fats at, at parang hindi sa pantay. Okay, so mas malaki yung right kaysa sa left. Basing on these pictures, parang grade 2 to grade 3 ang gyno niya kasi wala pa siya sa laylayan. So hindi siya delikado. Ang opera is for aesthetics lang. Hindi siya magiging cancer. Pinakita ko yung kay Doc. Mas gusto niya na mas makita to personally because yeah, may possibility nga daw na Meron akong tinatawag na man boob at meron naman daw solusyon doon. Ito ako ngayon sa Pilipinas. Pumalik ako sa Pilipinas. I, I take a break from Indonesia. I talk to my management na kailangan ko umuwi just to, just to check my, my, my situation. Our patient for today is uh, Mr. TJ Marquez. And he has a diagnosis of gynecomastia. 
This usually is attributed during the pubertal years to um, imbalances in hormones, no? but uh, this can be transient. No? But for TJ, who is well past uh, his pubertal years, um, this can be attributed to uh, some hormonal imbalance or um, this can also be attributed to some medications no? as previously uh, taken. Ayan, so pwedeng hormonal. So important na magpa-endocrine workup prior to gynosurgery kasi gyno per se is hindi delikado. Pero maraming hormonal diseases na pwedeng mag-present as gyno. So you check dapat ang estrogen at progesterone levels mo. If ever increase estrogen or decrease testosterone, i-correct pa yan at i-investigate why hindi normal ang hormone levels mo. So some gyno and diagnosed cases of Klinefelter syndrome. In a nutshell, this is how a person with Klinefelter syndrome looks. May man boobs, ang shape na katawan at fat distribution ay pang babae, matangkad, walang buhok sa katawan, fat thin. Uh, for now, uh, when I did my examination, um, he has a combination of what we call uh, ductal and uh, fat hypertrophy, no? meaning um, his chest has some firmness, no? which is attributed to the ducts of the, of the chest, of the breast. And this needs to be excised, no? needs to be removed. At the same time, the fat around his chest area also needs to be reduced so that uh, his chest um, becomes uh, from man boobs to uh, a more uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, chest. So ano ang ducts at ano ang fat? So let's go to anatomy. Ang chest ng lalaki is composed of two pectoralis major muscles na makikita sa magkabilang dibdib mo. Sa itaas nito nakapatong ang breast glands. Sa babae, ang mga glands na ito ay nagpoproduce ng gatas na dadaan sa ducts palabas ng nipple. Sa lalaki, hindi ito lumalaki dahil hindi ito nagagamit. Pag increase ng hormone estrogen or pag nagsisteroids ang lalaki, lumalaki ito at nagiging gynecomastia. Take note din sa area around the nipple. Ito ang areola. Lumala pa din ito sa gyno. So ang gagawin ni Doc kay TJ is a periareolar incision. So in this case, sa itaas ng areola. So sa akin is sa baba. Kasi para di masyado makita ang scar, dapat magblend sa color ng areola. So dapat i-remove ang palibot na fat, either through open or liposuction. Para mas magandang tingnan ang hubog ng breast post-op. Kung gland lang ang kukunin mo, pwedeng magka-donut deformity afterwards. So dapat hindi rin sobrang kunin kasi hindi rin magandang tingnan na sobrang flat ang chest area. So sa lalaki, hindi tayo nag i incision kasi maliit lang ang breast ng lalaki and we want to have an incision na less noticeable. Usually, ginagawang may incision na ito sa mga female to male transition kasi malaki ang breast mass ng babae. Hindi kaya ng periareolar incision lang. So incision of gynecomastia is done either to general anesthesia or sedation coupled with nerve block. Meaning, pwede lang patulugin ng pasyente then local anesthesia lang sa chest area para hindi masaktan. Basta careful lang din kasi highly vascular ang chest area mo. Pwedeng maging systemic ang effect ng local anesthesia. Okay, so notice na may mga gauze siya sa kilikili banda. So mga insertion points yan ng liposuction probes. Hey guys, what's up? This is TJ Marquez again. And today as I promise, bibiyo ko kayo ng update sa aking ginawang gynecomastia surgery. Ito yung nangyari sa operation. Ayan, yan, yan. Nakikita nyo ba guys? Ito. So I actually don't know how much gynosurgery costs. Kasi nga yung sa akin is libre. Kasi ginawa siya during my time as a surgery resident. So shout out to my surgeon, Sir Dino Benaventura. If you are from Davao, may clinic siya sa Forte Medical Group on top of Marina Tuna Building. So may group kami sa Facebook called Gynecomastia Philippines Group. You can join there if you want to look for surgeons and how much they usually cost. So it could range from 50 to 150,000 pesos depending on the expertise of the surgeon. Ito na siya. See? Really, di ba? Ang laki. I mean... Mas malaki yung sa right side, but yung sa left side medyo konti lang. Those are glands. Mas malaki ang right gland niya over sa left. Meron siyempre yung downtime. Like, on my second and third day, ito yun. Medyo, as you can see, medyo mayroong mga pasa. Dahil siyempre, kaya naman daw nagkapasayan sabi ni Doc, is siyempre nabugbog yan since nagkaroon ng operation. So hematoma is normal. Minsan may blood collection pa sa ilalim. Ito guys, as you can see, I'm wearing this one. Gear gel sa buong katawan dahil since nagtanggal ng laman, yung skin mo na loose, makompress. Kailangan gamitin ko doon to one month onwards. Girdles also help para hindi mo mo yung blood during post-op period. 
kasi nakocompress niya ang site para mabilis din na maabsorb ang hematoma. Kung malaki talaga ang nakuwang tissue, like in my case, ang grade 4 gyno, pwede rin maglagay ng JP drains para masuction palabas ang dugo sa loob. Um, rated SPG. <laughs> pa! Yeah! Yan po. Ayan, ayan na siya. Medyo okay na po. Nawala na yung mga pasapasa niya, guys. Ayan. So may upside pa ang incision site ni TJ and may hematoma pa ng konti. So evident talaga na lumiit. Yung shape ng nipple niya nag-improve din. Hindi na siya patusok. You know what? My main objective kung bakit ako nag-post ng vlog about gynecomastia is to give awareness. Well, I'm so happy ko alam nila kasi ang dami kong nare-receive na feedbacks from individuals na, na nagkakaroon din ng ganitong condition. Ang daming lalaki na may gyno, as high as 60% of teenagers have gyno, more than half. Para sa adults naman, mas maliit ang bilang. Pero yun lang, kung sa adults, mas maliit ang chance mo na mawala pa yan kasi established na ang hormonal levels mo sa dugo. So sa recent photo si TJ, makikita mo na meron pa ring scar. Normal yan kasi all wounds will scar. If ever hypertrophic or keloid forming na, pwede mag-inject ng steroids sa scar para lumiit. Also, one thing na dapat malaman ng patient going into surgery is that pwedeng mawala ang sensation sa nipples mo kasi nga pwedeng maputol ang nerve supply during surgery. In my case, sa left na lang. So please be guided accordingly. So takeaway message, lahat ng tao may insecurities. For guys, body shaming could take the form of man boobs. As much as flat chest and cellulites are genetic in females, man boobs are genetic in males. Hearing comments like, magbra ka nga or padede can have lasting effects on some guys. Hindi po kasalanan ng lalaki kung mas malaki pa yung dede niya kaysa sa dede niyo. Also, to guys with gynecomastia, work hard. First, work hard sa gym to improve your chest. Second, work hard to afford gyno surgery. As someone who has gone through the same surgery, I'm not one to say love yourself and accept your body. I'm more of a go get that surgery and live your best life person. So your confidence will surge onwards once your breasts are gone. Pagipunan at maghanap ng trusted surgeon. So this is elective surgery, hindi emergency. So health first, then retalk later. So that's it for today's episode of Marites Files. See you again next week for another meaty surgical chisem. Till next time, search on guys!